The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, interactive. You're listening to the RCWR Show with Lee Sanders. Whether we like it or not, we do have a responsibility to our listeners, especially those that passionately love WWE. We know that there's those fans out there that plan on checking out this new inaugural pay-per-view called Battleground. It's only fair that we look into the crystal ball and we try to figure out who all is going to be walking away victorious at Sunday's pay-per-view. Yeah, it's that time, folks. It's another installment of the RCWR show Call That Match. Now, for those of you that are new, you're hearing this for the first time, basically the way it works, me and Joe, we look at the cards and we try to approach it from a booking standpoint as far as what makes good business. Not in the way that Triple H and crew likes to put it out there, but we try to look at it from a smart booking standpoint and at the same time try to also look into possible storylines that we could see get set up leading into the next pay-per-view. Now, Joe and I, we are pretty much on point because we hit the mark with the Rhodes family. We said as early as Battleground, they were probably going to get it on with the Shield. We called that right pretty much. I think we had that down. What was it? The night Cody Rhodes got fired that we had it down? That's right. You're exactly right. Okay. We also talked about Ryback being a Paul Heyman guy. We were, you know, we actually talked about that for a couple of months, but we did hype it up even more after we saw what Ryback did by helping out Paul Heyman in his match against CM Punk. So we're batting a pretty good average over here so far. Okay. So first thing that I want to talk about, and Joe, I've been waiting patiently to talk about this because I definitely want to get your thoughts on this. Kicking off the battleground is the pre-show. 30 minutes before it, uh, the actual pay-per-view comes on the air, you have to do a double take because you're like, WTF, Dolph Ziggler taking on Damian Sandow? Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Dolph Ziggler in a pre-show and it's not for a title or anything? Wait a minute now. Dolph Ziggler, the same guy that cashed in his money in the bank briefcase became world champion. Well, okay, we're not supposed to remember that. Oh, okay, well, not, not that time. But but how about the, the next time when he went and he cashed it in on an injured Alberto Del Rio and he had the whole arena just in your four year for him. But wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of weeks later, Alberto Del Rio took him out. It was a legit concussion that Dolph Ziggler had. And Dolph Ziggler pretty much hasn't been the same Ever since, Joe, your thoughts on Dolph Ziggler kicking off the Battleground pay-per-view, but with the pre-show? Oh, man, it seems like the mighty have fallen, man. It seems Dolph Ziggler's going down the same road as The Miz went. Like, what happened? They were main event stars that now are headlining pre-shows, and it's very disappointing. And the same thing for Mr. Money in the Bank on the other end, Mr. Damian Sandow. He, since he won the briefcase, he has not been relevant whatsoever. So what is going on here? Let's really look at this, Joe. Who needs this victory more? Who is in dire need of great momentum? I think it's Damian Sandow, actually. The man has the ticket to becoming the world heavyweight champion. It, it, he's been put down long enough. It's about time now that he looks strong. He looks like a contender that can actually be a world champion. So I'm going to go with Sandow here. I'm looking at it as well. And I think what Battleground really needs to have people walk away and go, Oh, my God, what a great pay-per-view. We need to see Sandow at least entertain the idea of cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase, okay? So the fact that they are putting him in this battleground kickoff before the pay-per-view, if they want to work social media, they can actually do it. Regardless of what happens with Damian Sandow, win or lose, 
Sandow could sit up and put a couple of tweets out there. He did it at the last pay-per-view, and, of course, we didn't see him do any type of a cash-in. But they can be in a position, they being WWE, they could be in a position where they could work social media and make you think that Damian Sandow is going to possibly cash in that Money in the Bank briefcase. So keeping that in mind, I'm conflicted right now. Part of me is looking at Dolph Ziggler, and I have just not liked the way things have been going for him as of late. But uh, this is tough, man. I, I'm very tempted to say Damian Sandow. My gut is saying Dolph Ziggler, but my heart is saying Damian Sandow. I, I mean, the, honestly, both of these guys are in dire need of serious momentum. It sucks that they're facing one another because I would like to see both of these guys on the pay-per-view in any other type of match where they can gain some momentum with a victory as opposed to facing one another. It's like basically putting one poor little sad little puppy with another poor little sad little puppy. It's like, which poor little sad puppy do you want to take home more, basically? I got to side with you, Joe. I got to go with Damian Sandow just for the sole purpose of Damian Sandow picking up some serious momentum. But, folks, don't be too surprised if Dolph Ziggler is somehow able to pull a win over Sandow. But, again, I think the end result is going to be Sandow looking to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I've been calling it for every pay-per-view now. <laughs> this is what going on the third pay-per-view. I've been calling it for it for it to happen. So, yeah, why not? <laughs> I hope Damian Sandow cashes it in. Or at least looks like he's going to cash it in. Let's make him relevant. He needs to be relevant. I'm, I'm kind of looking for him to cash in the briefcase. Uh, let's go to our next match. We got A.J. Lee taking on Brie Bella singles match for the WWE Divas Championship. Joe, who you got? <sighs> okay, now, there's the new, you know, the new stage to this. We have AJ Lee with a backup now in Tamina, a new bodyguard. So, that AJ looks strong there. But now we got Bree, who, they're bringing her personal life into the storyline now, where they know she's engaged to Daniel Bryan, and you know, they're pushing her to be one of the top divas. So but just judging by that, two sides to it, I am going to say Brie Bella will walk away as the divas champion. I don't know. I don't know. I was looking at this on paper earlier today, and I was just playing around with a couple of different scenarios. And one scenario that plays out to me the most, is notice on Raw, after Brie had defeated Alicia Fox, how Nikki Bella got in the ring and she was celebrating as if it was her that had got the victory. And we saw Brie kind of give Nikki a look for like about three seconds like, okay, this is supposed to be my moment. What's going on here? And she just kind of passed it off like, eh, that's my sister. And, you know, I, and I just kind of, maybe I kind of overanalyzed that. Maybe uh, I just overread that a bit too much. But I kind of looked at that, and that just kind of got me thinking, hey, how badass would it be to maybe see Nikki Bella do something in a way where she genuinely was trying to help out Brie in retaining her title, but... Because of what you mentioned there earlier, AJ Lee having a new sidekick in Tamina, Bree, Nikki having a little bit of a miscommunication, if you will, Bree comes up short. She doesn't get the Divas Championship. And maybe the fallout from that on wall could be Bree having a conversation with Nikki and Nikki basically saying, hey, I'm sorry what had happened. I really thought that you were going to be able to get it there. Yeah, I was only trying to help, and maybe we could see and hear Bree say something to the effect of, you know, the match was mine, I had it, you really didn't need to interfere. And that can pretty much just set up a big old domino effect where for the next couple of weeks, and I would like to see this 
lead into the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view to really kind of kick it off there. But I want to see for the next couple of weeks, Nikki Bella try to continue to be supportive for her sister as she picks up maybe a couple of more losses here and there, but is somehow able to get a rematch against AJ for the Divas title. Now, it can be as early as Hell in a Cell. But the way I'm looking at this right now, I have Nikki, if I was booking this, I have Nikki sabotaging the hell out of Bree's next title shot opportunity against AJ Lee at Hell in a Cell, where she will turn on her sister, and thus you have the sisters going back and forth. Bree is in a very good position right now as a baby face. It's a, it's a very good slow transition that she's been making to a baby face. Both sisters, but I don't think that's the name of the game. I think you have to have one sister be face and the other go heel. So that's how I'm looking at this as we try to set up the next pay-per-view. I got to see at Battleground Nikki Bella try to interfere to help out her sister, but Brie Bella comes up short. AJ Lee holds the title. So you're going with Brie, right? I, yep, I'm still going with Brie. You're going with Brie. I'm going with AJ for the retain. All right, let's look at the next match we got up on here. Uh, next up, we got Ezekiel Jackson. No, personally, I would love to see Ezekiel Jackson, but not. Uh, so I didn't mean to tease you guys like that. that that's kind of mad. That's kind of that's kind of jacked up. No, seriously though, we got. Uh, I guess we could tackle this one now. Let's come back to that one, because uh, that looks like a, a bit of a thought process. Let's go to Alberto Del Rio taking on Rob Van Dam. Hardcore match for the World Heavyweight title. Joe, how are you looking at that one? All right, well, obviously the favorite should be RVD. This is his style of a match. This is what we've come to know from RVD being the extreme championship wrestling's greatest prospect ever to come out of that program. You know, this is downright RVD style, his style of match. And with that said, I am going with Alberto Del Rio. And let me explain why I'm going with Alberto Del Rio. You know, being a wrestling fan, going on the Internet, of course, because the Internet kind of ruins everything, you know, there are reports out there, not saying it's true because I don't know personally, but the reports are that RVD's contract is coming up where he's going to be taking a while off. So... With that said, I think maybe it's time what you brought up last month that Ricardo Rodriguez will turn on RVD and Del Rio will, I guess, quote-unquote, injure him to the point where we don't see RVD for a while and Del Rio will retain and get his mouthpiece back that he desperately needs, Ricardo Rodriguez. Oh, wait a minute now. Back up a second. Back up a second. Now, see, I was feeling everything you were saying right there. But then you said desperately needs Ricardo Rodriguez. Why does Alberto Del Rio now desperately need Ricardo Rodriguez? Enlighten the folks. Sure. The same thing we were just talking about with Los Matadores. Del Rio needs a mouthpiece. The real is not great on the mic himself. He's pretty boring. He's pretty bland. When he was when he first debuted and he was taken serious that he was a world champion when he first came out, he you know, Ricardo Rodriguez was his mouthpiece. That was the, the guy, you know, his sidekick. That that's that's where we took him the most serious. I think they need to go back to that formula. That's what worked best for him. Now let's say hypothetically speaking, Ricardo Rodriguez he sides with RVD. He stays with him to the very end, and basically something weird happens where we see RVD, if not get taken out permanently, wink, wink, uh, at that pay-per-view, maybe the next night on Raw or SmackDown, then what do you do with Ricardo Rodriguez? Is there somebody else he can get buddy-buddy chums with to take on the good fight against ADR or is the end result he goes back to ADR. I personally rather see him go back to Del Rio. I don't I can't think off the top of my head right now to put him with a superstar cuz how does that make logical sense? Like he just becomes friends with another superstar that 
randomly wants to feud with Del Rio. So I, I don't know. I don't see how that transition happens unless if you want to enlighten me because I, 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 don't, I just don't see it on my end. So I see him going back with Del Rio. I am going to look at let me let me just really really look at this card here for a couple of seconds. And as I'm looking at this card, the one thing that we really do not have is a top baby face on the SmackDown side of things. We we really don't have anybody. So here's the thing that we got to say to ourselves: Rob Van Dam is the top baby face for the SmackDown brand right now. Mm-hmm. So the real question that we need to be asking ourselves is, if you were to eliminate Rob Van Dam, let's say, hypothetically speaking, his contract gets pretty much up, he's not going to be able to work another event, or maybe he refuses to work another event, what's going to happen with Alberto Del Rio and that world title, what direction do you go, if you can go in any direction? Now, there's a couple of different scenarios right here. Now, one of them that I'm thinking of, I know they said that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Sheamus. They said that he's not supposed to be coming back, not at least until about the Royal Rumble. Now, maybe they just put that out there to throw fans off, Maybe he's 100%, and it's just all about the right opportunity to bring him back. We've seen it happen before in the WWE. Somebody puts out a projected time frame when they're going to be coming back, and they end up coming back maybe two, three months early. It, it, it happens from time to time. So that's one scenario that could end up happening, okay? So keeping that in mind, it makes sense to have Rob Van Dam lose to Alberto Del Rio. I think the end result, no matter how you cut it, Joe, we're going to see Alberto Del Rio possibly walk away with the World Heavyweight title. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm looking at Damian Sandow, and I'm saying to myself, does he cash in the money in the bank briefcase? And quite honestly, I don't see it happening. You know, honestly, if I was booking this right, I would actually have Rob Van Dam defeat Alberto Del Rio to become the new world champion. But then I would have Damian Sandow take advantage of Rob Van Dam, you know, knock him out cold, whatever like that, become the world champion. And thus, if you can work with Rob Van Dam to maybe do one more match, then at Hell in a Cell... You could have it be a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight title. That way you can squeeze whatever dates, because you know, we don't exactly know when his contract is up. We just keep hearing the rumblings that this month it's supposed to be up, and then he's supposed to take some time away from the company. He has not signed a new deal yet, so I guess he's weighing his options. I don't know, Joe, but... <sighs> I'm looking at Alberto Del Rio for the victory. I don't see Ricardo Rodriguez going back. I don't. I I, I think something like that could happen, but maybe on Raw or SmackDown. I don't see it happening on that night. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Next match, uh, Goldust. Cody Rhodes with Dusty Rhodes in their corner taking on the Shield. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins with Dean Ambrose in their corner. How's that looking? Mm, a very interesting match. Absolutely a must win for the Rhodes family because how great is that? We have the opportunity to not only get Cody back, but to get Dustin back, Goldust. Because then he looked great in his match with Randy Orton. The man looks like he looks like he's 15 years younger again. He looks like attitude error, body style. He can still go. These Rose boys are just excellent, man. Started from their father down. Um, with that said, I see the Shield pulling off some shenanigans and stealing this victory away. I think, I think Dean Ambrose is gonna attack Dusty. Possibly, one of the sons are distracted. 
and that's how the Shield will get a victory over the, maybe the two or three on one advantage on maybe Dustin or Cody, whoever it is. I see the Shield winning this match, and but that does not mean we will see the last of Cody and Goldust. They will be back somehow, some way, but this is not the way they're going to come back. I agree with you 100%. I'm not seeing Goldust and Cody Rhodes walk into the sunset hand in hand. I'm not seeing that. Now, see, there's that part of me that has been paying attention to a lot of the tweets that's been coming from Goldust. And I know right before he had came back to WWE, he had a lot of appearances that was going on with a bunch of independent promotions. And I would think that all those dates, he still has to keep those commitments. And, um, you know, keeping that in mind, it would be kind of messed up for him to cancel on those appearances you know, because that's bad business, then the next time around, you know, let's say he's done with the WWE and he tries to go back to them, they're going to remember he canceled on them and they already did the promotions and all that, hyping him up. They're probably not going to want to do business with him again. So I think right now I'm not really too sold on a gold dust and Cody Rhodes back in the WWE, not just yet. I'm with you 100%. I see the Shield picking up the victory here. And we should point out that this is just a regular tag match. It's not for the tag titles. I'm not sure who put that out there, but it's not for the tag titles. It's just a regular tag team match. How badass would it be to see Los Matadores interfere in this match, or better yet, to see the Usos get involved in this, to try to keep themselves in the loop, to continue some type of a program with the Shield, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. You know, that's that's the real story that I'm looking at right here, you know, setting up that next pay-per-view, but I'm with you 100%. Gold Dust, Cody Rhodes, They're going to come up short. Now, how they could possibly be brought back into the WWE the next go-round? Hoo-wee! Honestly, I can see Triple H and Stephanie McMahon just rubbing it in the Rhodes family's faces that they gave them another opportunity, you know, and they pretty much had came up short. I kind of like the idea of seeing the Rhodes family continue to sit up and make special little cameos as they somehow escape security to try to get their hands on the shield or whatnot. I think we're probably going to continue to see them do some type of run-ins or what have you. One question that comes into mind, though, Joe, we see all this happen. Dusty Rhodes is out of a job. At this point, are we introduced to a new player that's going to, take the good fight to Stephanie and Triple H. Ooh, interesting. Because, yes, with Dusty losing his job, NXT is going to need a new coach, a new general manager, as I think that was Dusty's um, role, general manager of NXT. So that there will definitely be a new part there. Now, as far as somebody fighting the good fight, I think in the weeks to come, we are going to see somebody, a new person, join the scene and fight the good fight. And a little hit there, on Monday Night Raw, when they introduced Stephanie and Triple H, they referred to Stephanie as an owner of the WWE. That's something they never usually did. So No, no, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because... To me, I honed in on that, and I'm saying to myself, huh, and even the commentators, they briefly mentioned it, and they mentioned it for a reason. Those of you that don't have your wrestling down, when the commentators usually mention something, sometimes they're trying to throw you a hand at possibly what the next storyline is going to be around the corner. So, Joe, when I heard that, the first thing I couldn't help but say to myself is, well, wait a minute now, I just watched the Triple H by Kingdom Come DVD, and Vince McMahon was basically saying, yeah, Triple H, he wants to be Vince McMahon one day. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. 
I think he'll do okay, blah, blah, blah. But they all pretty much kind of said, as they were talking about Triple H and everything, oh, yeah, he'll be he'll be a good leader, blah, 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 whenever Vince McMahon does decide he wants to step down, right? So I'm keeping all that in mind and keeping in mind that the commentators called Stephanie the new WWE owner. Maybe Vince McMahon might be the one to come back and try to fight the good fight. Maybe he might be the one that will feel as though Triple H and Stephanie, they've taken it a bit too far, and he's the one that will reinstate Goldust and Cody Rhodes. Because, honestly, that's exactly what I see happening. I think at the next pay-per-view, you're going to see the Rhodes in action again, and it's going to be courtesy of somebody else coming into play to stick it to Triple H and Stephanie. If it's not Vince McMahon, are we still holding out for Shane, or should we just say that's a loss? Oh, man, that's it's slim to none right now. I'm going to hold a 10% hope still that it's Shane McMahon, but it's looking like the, it's looking like the boss. It's looking like the champion right now, Vince McMahon. Yeah, it really is. It really is. All right, we got two more matches left. CM Punk versus Ryback with Paul Heyman. Singles match. Talk about one of the most awkward segments on WWE Raw. Paul Heyman asking Ryback if he'll be his Paul Heyman guy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. CM Punk versus Ryback. Okay, well, first off, I want to I want to <laughs> acknowledge the tweet that you sent me yesterday, well, Paul Heyman about to commit a Vanilla Sky moment. <laughs> 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 that was great. I la- yeah. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys that don't know what we're talking about, you would have had to listen to the weekend edition. Like, what was that two weeks ago? We were talking about that. Yeah, <laughs> like like two in the afternoon, and I had like a potty mouth. <laughs> yeah, how are you, how are you looking at that one, Joe? All right, well, I think the feud is gonna end here with Heyman and Punk. First of all, I think this is gonna be well. I don't think that again. That's hell in a cell. Oh, I forgot that the paper is so close. But uh, I'm gonna have hmm. You know what? I'm going to have Ryback go over in this one, knowing that Hell in the Cell is right around the corner, so that'll be the payoff. So I'll take back what I said as the feud ending there. Ryback is going to somehow win this one with the payoff going to Punk at the next pay-per-view. So, yes, Ryback will go over in this match on Sunday. Ooh, you got Ryback going over? Ooh, well, let's see here. I don't know, man. I... Because, see, there's that part of me that's looking at the Night of Champions pay-per-view. And correct me if I'm wrong, not only did CM Punk lose to Paul Heyman, but you go a month before that, and that pay-per-view was SummerSlam, correct? Yes. And SummerSlam, CM Punk lost to Brock Lesnar. So do we really want to have CM Punk lose for three consecutive pay-per-views? Now, let's say yes, then I can see where you're going. If CM Punk loses to Ryback this Sunday, no doubt CM Punk is just going to continue to be involved in this program with these guys, and we could see it go down in a way where maybe it will be a tag match. Because, honestly, that's the one thing that keeps speaking out to me the most is, okay, it's CM Punk taking on three guys. CM Punk needs a little bit of help from somebody. There's got to be somebody that he could team up with to stick it to these guys. But who? Because my whole thing is, do fans really want to see CM Punk versus Ryback for two pay-per-views in a row? Good question. That's a very good question, but this this is a there's a new element to right back now and that's Paul Heyman. So maybe a stipulation at the next pay per view will entice the fans to want to buy this one because Paul Heyman and CM Punk could just make they can make this match 
every month of the year and make it interesting because of the personalities involved. So I'm going to say yes, actually, to that one. We, you can't just bury right back right away when he just became a Paul Heyman guy. So that that's my reasoning for picking right back in this one. I'm going to side with you. I'm going to side with you then. I'm going to say right back. I, I don't like the idea of CM Punk losing for three consecutive months, but Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. Ryback versus CM Punk for the WWE title, Hell in a Cell. That was last year, correct? I think they actually fought in the TLC pay-per-view. It was a TLC. Who did CM Punk fight last year at Hell in a Cell? Because whoever he fought last year, what I'm saying is Hell in a Cell, CM Punk is going to get a win. Yes. Yes, he is. I don't yeah, remember who he wrestled last year, though. I have to know. Okay. I, that's the, I'm trying to think hard. I want to say... I want to well, say... It, it, it might have been right back. Because was it TLC The Shield in, against Ryback and Daniel Bryan and Kane? I think so. I'm actually looking it yeah. up right now. Hell in a Cell 2011. All right, let's see. Let's pull it up right here. Main event here. Let's go to the main event. Uh, oh, 2012. Oh, 2012. Thank you. I looked up the wrong one. I'm getting <laughs> old, folks. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> like, what, what happened with that card? Okay, let's see here. 2012. Let's see here. I don't care about that. Yeah, I called it. Last year, it was CM Punk with Paul Heyman defeating Ryback. Yeah, that's right. I remember it now clearly. Yes. Yeah, Hell in the Cell for the WWE Championship. Yeah, it was a very short match. It was only like about 11 minutes. I'm going to say CM Punk loses, even though I, I, there's that part of me that feels like he needs to have some type of momentum. But then again, he's CM Punk. I mean, this guy could just come into an arena with a new T-shirt on like he did on Monday night and work the crowd, same way that he did in Chicago. Honestly, he needs to lose because it just doesn't make sense to see him go over Ryback. As you said, Ryback just got baptized as the new Paul Heyman guy. You know Curtis Axel is going to be looming around somewhere. Let's look at this going into Hell in a Cell. Does CM Punk reach out to somebody on the roster to help even up the odds to basically go two-on-two at Hell in a Cell? Yes, and I am pretty sure I know who it is. Let me guess, Mark Henry? Ooh, good guess. That was a great guess. But no, actually, that wasn't my That was Whoa, whoa, now that you think of it, hold on, I'm going to take that back. I was going to say Kofi Kingston because of the feud with Curtis Axel or even R-Truth. But you know what? I like that idea better. Yes, the world's strongest man. I like those names you just mentioned. But we're in agreement. CM Punk needs to, going forward, if we're booking this right, he needs to seek out help or, or maybe somebody that has business with the Heyman guys comes to CM Punk's aid, like if it's a scenario where the next night on Raw, Punk is put into a position where it looks like he's about to get a two, maybe a three-on-one beatdown when somebody comes out to help him. Now, look, we need to see the guys part like a C when this person comes to help them. So, you know, we could say Mark Henry, but... We could also go to Kofi Kingston, the R-Truth route. Remember, Brad Maddox, unless we see it go down this Sunday, Maddox did tell R-Truth he would consider giving him a title shot against Curtis Axel. Right, right. So there, there you go. I don't know how some of you guys feel about that, but any one of those combinations I like. CM Punk is going to give him a good rub off. We need to see that happen. It, I think we're in agreement, right? It's going to have to be a tag match at Hell in a Cell. Yes, that, that's the way to go. Okay. We got one match. WWE Championship, Daniel Bryan taking on Randy Orton. Ah, the face of the WWE versus 
the fan favorite of the WWE. And what is this, pay-per-view three in a row now of these mm-hmm. two going at it? Mm-hmm. And there's not a stipulation in this match. Oh, no, it's not a no holds barred, right? It's just a regular match, correct? Uh, it's a normal match for the WWE title, yeah. It's a normal match for the title. And we saw Randy Orton lose twice. No, 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 Randy Orton lost once. I'm sorry, that was John Cena. Okay. Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan. I'm going to say we see the legend killer come back. You know, the Viper is back. And I think the Viper will strike, and the Viper will walk away as the WWE champion. And, of course, not clean. There's going to be shenanigans in the match. We're going to see an appearance from probably Triple H or The Shield. Or, as a matter of fact, no. Maybe they will come out, but I think, actually, The Big Show is going to help Randy Orton win the WWE championship, being forced to. Huh. But you're looking at Randy Orton as the new WWE champion. Yes, Randy Orton will walk away with the title. I'm with you 100%. Honestly, I know we got folks out there, they love Daniel Bryan, but you really got to think about this. Daniel Bryan is one of the hottest things that's happening for the WWE right now as we have a John Cena that continues to be away from the company, rehabbing his injury, it makes perfect sense to have Daniel Bryan continue to chase the WWE title. They need for it to continue that route. And honestly, I think at this rate, if they play it the way that they're doing it and they play it smart, they play it safe, Randy Orton could be holding on to that title pretty much going into the Royal Rumble almost. It is possible, okay? If Daniel Bryan were to become the uh, WWE champion, I think the greatest way they can accomplish that is to have Daniel Bryan win the 2014 Royal Rumble. And from there, whoever's going to be the champion at WrestleMania, that's an entirely different story. We're not we're looking too far ahead. But I think right now, to play it safe, Daniel Bryan, he has to continue to chase after the WWE Championship. I'm with you, so going into the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, how do we see that coming about? Is that going to be a scenario where Daniel Bryan is going to be distracted by the antics of a big show that interferes in this match? Or is it going to be a case where Daniel Bryan is going to be wrapping up this feud with Big Show on television. Oh, that, uh, wow. I didn't think that far ahead. Um, I think, that, I don't know if we'll see Orton and Daniel Bryan one-on-one again at Hell in a Cell. But then, who, then who, but who else would they fight at the same time, unless if the Big Show's thrown in there somehow at a triple threat. But I don't know if that makes sense either. Um, I think the Daniel Bryan Big Show problem will hash out on television, but I think somehow we will get the actual Hell in a Cell match, because you have to have a Hell in a Cell match out of Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I think the actual matchup will be Bryan Orton again, and maybe maybe special referee the Big Show. Hmm. Maybe they'll go down that route. So... Are we both kind of on the same page here? It sounds like we're both kind of thinking that whether some fans like it or not, we're probably going to see Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton at another pay-per-view. Yeah, because who else are they going to fight? Um, you know, there's, there's really nobody else in the title scene right now besides the two of them, and it's such a short turnaround to the next pay-per-view, so it has to be the two of them again. That's very unfortunate, and and thus the problem is fans really going to be that invested into both pay-per-views, knowing that the same car that they're going to be looking at at Battleground, to some extent, maybe dress it up with a gimmick or two, is going to be at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It's a, a very tough spot. I'm with you, man, but you know what? I'm looking ahead here. 
the only way I can see this Hell in a Cell match being justified is if Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, they basically say to Daniel Bryan, if you don't become WWE champion at Hell in a Cell, you're out of a job. Not that Daniel Bryan needs to be put in that position because he's already over, but you want to continue to have the fans be on that Daniel Bryan pulse. I think you would have to do some type of a weird stipulation like that, only to see somebody, maybe Vince McMahon, come back and say to Triple H and Stephanie, you guys have been a little bit too abusive with the power, and one of the things that he tries to rectify uh, is Daniel Bryan, and he puts him you know, in a match against Randy Orton at Hell in a Cell for the title. And, and, you know, but minus that whole stupid little stipulation, but I, I would need to see something like that happen, qu- quite honestly. I, I think at this point, if you're going to go into Hell in a Cell, the ante has to be upped. I don't know how you feel about that, but I think that's a very good stipulation. If Daniel Bryan doesn't get the job done, he's fired from the WWE. I can see that. But he also has mentioned a few times that he doesn't care if he's fired. That's why he keeps breaking the rules. So I don't know if that's really going to have a lasting effect. Maybe maybe the stipulation could be if he doesn't win the title, he'll never get a title shot again from Randy Orton or something like that. Yeah, but if you go that route, then wouldn't it be a no-brainer that he's going to win? Maybe. Because you can also have McMahon take that, take that away. You know, that he could say Daniel Bryan's his moneymaker, you know, you know, anything like that. You know, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. That's fair and that's logical to think that. Absolutely. But there's always, when there's a will, there's a way in the WWE. So you just never know. Or he never gets another WWE title shot opportunity until the Royal Rumble. Right. He could always I mean, the that. world, you know, telling a wrestler that he's not going to be able to get another title shot opportunity is one thing, but telling them that they can or cannot enter the Royal Rumble is a different story. Mm-hmm. Sounds like Stone Cold Steve Austin all over again. Okay, so hypothetically speaking, Daniel Bryan, he gets one more opportunity for the WWE title. He comes up short at Hell in a Cell. Who is going to be there to work with the face of WWE and Randy Orton? I think that's when they plug in the Big Show. So Big Show versus Randy Orton. Yeah, just to fill time. We all know Big Show's not going to win. But who else? You can't have Brian and Orton fight every single pay-per-view for the rest of the year. So it's going to have to be somebody new and somebody connected to the storyline. So, or, or matter of fact, why not Cody Rhodes? This brings us to a very interesting topic, and, and Joe, you and me need to get together and figure out when we're going to do this. But you see the pickle that we're in with this because you got a lot of superstars that's out, top baby faces that are out. You have a very thin roster right now. You can only do but so much. And it's going to lead to us talking about the current state of WWE uh, and as well as TNA. So I think we should probably maybe look into maybe doing something like that. Maybe maybe this weekend we, we can try to see if we can do that for the good folks. But that's the way we're looking at it for the Battleground pay-per-view. One more time, we're going to take it from the top and work our way down uh, this Give you guys our uh, final uh, look on uh, who we think is going to be walking away victorious here. Battleground kickoff. Joe's going with Damian Sandow. I'm actually on the Damian Sandow wagon as well. AJ Lee versus Brie Bella. Joe's going with Brie as the new champion. I'm sticking with AJ Lee for the retain. CM Punk taking on Ryback. We both are in agreement. Ryback needs to get a win now that he's being dubbed the new Paul Heyman guy. Alberto Del Rio versus Rob Van Dam. I think we're both on the same page with that one. Alberto Del Rio for the retain, right? Yes, sir. 
All right, we got Daniel Bryan taking on Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. We see Randy Orton becoming WWE Champion once again. Goldust, Cody Rhodes, they will come up short at the hands of the Shields, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. And that's how we're looking at it, folks.